In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about Ruby, the actual computer language that Ruby on Rails uses. So let me switch over to my browser here. This is the actual Ruby language website, www.ruby-lang.org. If you just enter that, it'll take you to the English website if it detects a US address. This has lots of good information about Ruby, how to learn Ruby. Uh, VTC is also working on a series of Ruby videos to learn the actual language. Ruby has actually quite a long history. It was originally started and developed by a single individual, a Japanese amateur language designer by the name of Yukahiro Matsumoto. He's called Mats in the Ruby community and he's had a lot of conferences and stuff as you see the Ruby Conf 2006. I'm sure he'll be there. He decided that he wanted to develop a object-oriented, purely object-oriented scripting language that would be a good language akin to Perl or something along those lines. And in his own words, he didn't think it ever become as, uh, Ruby would ever become as popular as Perl, but it certainly has. It's a very popular language in Japan, far more actually than in the United States at this point, and there's many, many books written in Japanese. There's only a couple of books written in English at this point. One of the main books is called Programming Ruby, the Pragmatic Programmer's Guide. And this is from the Pragmatic Programmers. It's a company who Dave Thomas and Andy Hunt run. The book in the Ruby community is called the Pickaxe Book because on the cover is a, a picture of a pickaxe hitting at some rocks and there's a ruby hidden hidden in there, a ruby gem. The book is also available online. And in fact, if we look right down here in our web browser, you'll see a Ruby programming Ruby online. This is that that book. And this is the first edition. The second edition you'll have to buy, but the first edition is here. And this covers, by and large, most of the stuff you need to know to get started with Ruby. And it's a, certainly a, a really good resource. The Ruby site itself is really an excellent resource. There's a reference area with talks about all the classes that are built in Ruby so you can go through and find whatever type of information you need. It also has a FAQ area with tons of really good questions that people have asked and it's broken down quite well. The main thing to know is that Ruby is a separate distinct thing from Rails. Rails is just a framework for delivering web application that uses Ruby as its computer language to formulate it. And the reason that Ruby was chosen is because of the flexibility and the features of the language. It's a very rich language. And being purely object oriented, as long as you understand that programming paradigm, it's it's very powerful. You can extend it quite easily. And that that makes it very attractive for something like developing web applications. The main way to interact with Ruby and get a little experience with it is to do that via the IRB. It's Interactive Ruby. Let me exit out of here and clear this. So to get into IRB, you, from a command line, you issue the command IRB. Now you're inside of the Interactive Ruby command line. If I issue a simple command like 1 plus 1, you'll see that it responds with 2. Let's try something a little different. I'm going to say negative 11 dot abs. And in this case, the dot abs is a method call. And abs is absolute. And we get back 11. So the absolute value of negative 11 is 11. The interesting thing to note here is that this is treating this number as an object. This is the essential thing to understand about Ruby is that everything is an object. In a language such as Java, things like numbers, especially integers, those types of things are primitives and they're not they're not objects at all and you have to issue methods and put them inside the method to do something with them. But in Ruby, even a number is an object and you can do things with that object in an object-oriented fashion. Now let's take a look at something else. I'm going to type in some text here and I'm going to say length. And as you can imagine, this should return the length. So we're treating just some text. I put it in a quote there and 
it's not an object that I created beforehand or anything. I essentially am creating it on the fly right now. And I issued the length command, and it gives me the length. Let's do another command. And what I did just there is that as long as you've compiled Ruby with the read line uh, library, you can use the arrow key to move up and down and through your commands that you've issued to IRB. And that's similar to what happens on your command line. I'm going to issue capital I. Let's see if I get that command right. Get my spelling down, and you can see the text comes back capitalized, the first letter capitalized. So we're interacting with Ruby directly via IRB. In the next video, we'll actually go in and create a method inside of IRB and a class, so you get a little bit of the flavor of Ruby as far as creating methods and classes.